Let's talk about how to identify the most precise classification that can be applied to a quadrilateral, which has been graphed in the coordinate plane. This unit we've learned about rhombuses. They are parallelograms that have four congruent sides. So if you're going to prove that a quadrilateral is a rhombus, you could use the distance formula to show that all four sides have the same length. But if you want to prove that it's just a rhombus and not a square, you have to go one step further and use the slope formula to show that it doesn't have four right angles. Right angles would be formed by perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines, if you remember from first semester, have opposite reciprocal slopes. A rectangle is a parallelogram that has four congruent or right angles. So to prove that it has those four right angles, use the slope formula to show that each pair of sides is perpendicular. In other words, show that they have opposite reciprocal slopes. But if you want to prove that it's just a rectangle and not a square, then you need to use the distance formula to demonstrate that it does not have four congruent sides, that all four sides are not the same length. So the process for proving a rectangle versus the process for proving a rhombus are the same idea but opposite. For rhombus, you're using distance formula to show that all four sides are the same, but you're using slope formula to show that it doesn't have opposite reciprocal slopes. And for a rectangle, you're doing the opposite. Use the slope formula to show that it has opposite reciprocal slopes, but then use the distance formula to show that it does not have four congruent sides. Which of course means that square is both of those put together. You have to show that it has four congruent sides using the distance formula, and show that it has four right angles by showing that each pair of sides is perpendicular. To prove that something is a trapezoid, you need to prove that it has exactly one pair of parallel sides which means you need to find the slopes of all four sides because you have to prove that one pair of opposite sides is parallel, so they have the same slope, and you have to show that the other pair of sides don't have the same slope, which would mean that they are not parallel. Because if you show that both pairs of opposite sides have equal slopes, then you've shown that there are two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other, and that would have proven that it's a parallelogram. You need to prove that only one pair of opposite sides are parallel, and that the other pair of opposite sides is not parallel. And if you want to prove that it's specifically an isosceles trapezoid, you have to do that and show that the non-parallel sides are congruent to each other using the distance formula. So as a quick refresher, this is the distance formula, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, all square rooted. And this is the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We'll use the distance formula to calculate the lengths of segments and show that they're congruent or not congruent, and we'll use the slope formula to calculate the slopes of two lines and show that if they're equal, then they're parallel, and if they're opposite reciprocals, then they're perpendicular. So let's do a quick review of what opposite reciprocals are. Remember that opposite means that they have opposite signs, so one's a positive and one's a negative, and reciprocal means that they're the upside-down versions of each other. So if I wanted to find the opposite reciprocal of 4, well, since it's a positive, my answer has to be a negative. And if I flip 4 upside down, well, it's not a fraction right now, so that could be kind of confusing. But remember that anything can be written as a fraction by putting it over 1. So if I flip 4 over 1, it becomes 1 over 4, and opposite means it has to be negative. So 4 and negative 1 fourth are opposite reciprocals. The opposite reciprocal of negative 2 over 3 is positive 3 over 2. It's the opposite sign, one's positive, one's negative, and it's the reciprocal, it's the upside down version. The opposite reciprocal of 9 eighths would be negative 8 ninths. The opposite reciprocal of negative 1 half would be positive 2, or you could say 2 over 1. 1 is kind of weird because the opposite reciprocal of 1 is negative 1. You can think about 1 as being a fraction by putting it over 1, 1 over 1. But if I flip 1 over 1 upside down, it's still just 1 over 1, and 1 over 1 simplifies to 1. So the opposite reciprocal of 1 is just negative 1. And the opposite reciprocal of negative 5 would be positive 1 over 5. All right, let's give it a try. We are going to determine the most specific classification that we can apply to this quadrilateral. To do so, we're going to need to know the coordinates of each of those four points. So let's jot those down really quick. A is the point 2, 9, B is the point 9, 8, C is the point 8, 1, and D is the point 1, 2. Well, this looks kind of like a square to me. 
So the first thing that I want to do is figure out, are these right angles or not? If they're right angles, then that would mean that the sides creating each angle have opposite reciprocal slopes. So I'm just going to start out by calculating the slopes of all four sides. Now I'm going to do that with the slope formula. You could also just count. So if I find the slope of AB, then that's y2 minus y1, that's 8 minus 9, over x2 minus x1, so 9 minus 2. So I get negative 1 on top and 7 on bottom. So the slope of line AB is negative 1 7th. You could also find that just by counting. You go down 1 and to the right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So let's calculate the slopes of the other three lines as well. The slope of line DC, this one over here, so that's y2 minus y1, that's 2 minus 1, over x2 minus x1, so 1 minus 8. So again, I get negative 1 7th. So these two lines are parallel. Let's figure out the slopes of the other two segments. The slope of line AD is 2 minus 9 over 1 minus 2, and that gives me an answer of negative 7 over negative 1, and that reduces to positive 7. And again, you could have just counted that instead. If you don't want to use the formula, you just go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and to the right 1. One more line to calculate the slope of, that's BC. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I get 7 over 1, which is 7. So I've shown that this is at least a parallelogram, because each pair of opposite sides have equal slopes. But more than that, I've also shown that they have opposite reciprocal slopes for each pair of consecutive sides, which means all four of these angles have to be right angles. And all right angles are congruent, so this has to be a rectangle. But is it a square? Because it could be something more specific than a rectangle, and we have to show whether it is or isn't. If it is a square, then all four sides have to be the same length, and if it's not a square, if it's just a rectangle, then the opposite sides will have equal lengths, but not all four sides will have equal lengths. So the next thing to do is use the distance formula to calculate each of these measurements. So the length of AB is x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1, and that gives me a length of 7.1 units. And if I do the same thing for the lengths of BC and CD and DA, you'll see that we get the same answer for all four sides. Now we've done a lot of distance formula work so far this year, so I'm not going to go super slow through how to plug each of these numbers into the formula and calculate each of these numbers. You should definitely be good at that by now. And honestly, same thing with slope. You've done a lot of slope in Algebra 1 and 8th grade math. You should definitely know how to calculate slope by now. So this shouldn't be the hard part, and this shouldn't be the hard part of these types of problems. That's just number crunching, and you should definitely know how to do that by now. So what you're really doing with problems like this is using that knowledge of how to calculate distances and how to calculate slopes to come to a conclusion that since all four sides have the same length, this has to be a rhombus, and since we proved in this previous step that each pair of sides has opposite reciprocal slopes, and that meant that they were all right angles, so it must be a rectangle, if it's both a rectangle and it's a rhombus, then this has to be a square. Let's try another one. Looks like a trapezoid to me. But in order to figure that out for sure, we're going to need to know our coordinates, and we're going to need to prove that it has only one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, and the other pair is not parallel. So DE, the slope of DE, would end up being 1 fourth. You can either get that with the formula, or you go up 1 and write 4. GF, if I plug those numbers into slope formula, I get negative 2 over negative 8, so you might initially think that it's a different slope. But if you simplify, that's also 1 fourth, because I go up 1, right 4, up 1, right 4. So I have at least one pair of opposite sides that is parallel. But let's prove that the other pair of opposite sides is not parallel. The slope of DG would be 5, because I go up 5 and write 1, and the slope of EF is, well, not 5, it's negative 4 thirds, because I would go down 4 and write 3. So based on this information, we can definitely conclude that this is a trapezoid. It has one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, and one pair of opposite sides that are not parallel. But could I give it a more specific classification? Is this isosceles? It kind of looks like it is. It kind of looks like these two sides are the same length, 
So let's prove it. DG, its length, would be 5.1 units when I plug my points for D and G into distance formula. But EF is 5 units. And that's why it's so important that you actually show the work on this, because your eyeballs cannot tell the difference between a segment that is 5 units long and a segment that is 5.1 units long. You need to actually do the math and show your evidence for why this is what it is. Based on all of our information that we've gathered, this is just a trapezoid, but it's not isosceles. Let's try another one. Kind of looks like a rectangle to me, so let's see if we can prove it. Write down your coordinates. In order to prove that it's a rectangle, I would need to show that consecutive sides have opposite reciprocal slopes, because that would mean that each angle is a right angle. So let's calculate the slopes. JK has a slope of 4 thirds. KL has a slope of negative 4 fifths. Let's double check that with counting. If I go from J to K, I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the right 3. So yeah, that's 4 thirds. And KL, I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, these looked like they were right angles, but I guess they're not because they're not opposite reciprocal slopes. They're opposites but they're not reciprocals. Let's prove the same thing for our other two sides as well. The slope of LM is negative 4 over negative 3, which reduces to positive 4 over positive 3. So at least LM is parallel to JK, and the slope of JM is negative 4 fifths. So we can only conclude so far that this is a parallelogram. It's not a rectangle because each of our consecutive sides did not have opposite reciprocal slopes. The only thing that we have shown is that opposite sides have equal slopes and therefore it's a parallelogram. And it doesn't really look like it's a rhombus, it doesn't look like all four sides are congruent to each other, but we do have to prove whether or not it's a rhombus because that's the next most specific type of parallelogram that it could be. So let's calculate each of our distances. And yeah, it turns out that each of our pairs of opposite sides are equal, but not all four sides are equal. So the most specific classification that we could give to this is just that it's a parallelogram. And that's all you need to know about identifying quadrilaterals that have been graphed in the coordinate plane. And that's actually all you need to know about quadrilaterals. In our next unit, we'll be moving on to circles.